Welcome back to another episode of One on One with Courtney Starks, and I thank you all for being here. Joining me today, whew, you guys already know how I feel about this artist, how I feel about him. This is my brother from another mother. Everybody, please welcome to the to this to the show, Dre Scott. Thank you once again for being here. Yo, uh, I am so excited to have you. Um, for those of you who know, I have went on the journey of American Idol myself. So to be able to have this conversation with one of my favorite artists is amazing. So I'm, um, yeah, <laughs> 16 <laughs> and yeah. you're now 28. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Man, talk about a journey. So let's, let's, let's kind of journey back a little bit to the inspiration behind taking that leap. As I was preparing for today, I said to myself, I remember being on the line, trying to go and audition and thinking that I was going to go straight to see Simon and Randy and Paula and at, at that time and realizing that, no, there's steps to this. There's procedures to this and totally not being ready like I thought I was. For yeah. you, Dre, how was your process in being a contestant on American Idol? Um honestly it was the same thing you know we don't especially back in the day back at those yeah. times like the internet wasn't accessible as as it is now you know what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. things it wasn't YouTube really wasn't a huge thing you don't know all the the behind the scenes stuff so me as a my first season my, as a 15 year old that I didn't even want to do to begin with my mom made me I was all right cool. so I'm just you know and then I'm like oh there's if the folks that don't that don't know it there's three auditions before you even get to the main things yes and it tripped me out because i didn't i didn't grow up around singers and musicians mm -hmm. so, granted not that i thought i was you know hot shit but it was, <laughs> it was just like i i was a person in my community that's saying i grew up around athletes and you know just whatever so it was, it was a very humbling experience but also it was nice because i finally found like a sense of a uh, tribe. Mm, that was nice. Be, yeah. Be around other people that, um, the community. That, exactly. They had yeah. that same love and I never, I didn't have to explain what I did. We just got what we do. So that alone was, was, was cool. Um, but yeah, it, I didn't expect any of what was happening. You yeah. know, it, it was, it was cool. It was a, a nice, good little life lesson and industry yeah. lesson. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That. So you, you know, going through that, like you said, back in the day, it's so much different than easy access. I like, I like to call it now because some of the things that now you put a TikTok out and you are a millionaire in the morning or you're famous by morning. But back then you had to stand on those lines. And like Absolutely. you were saying, there were three auditions you had to go through. And one of them, those of you who don't know, one of them was to get a band on your hand. It wasn't even to go audition. You were going to get a band. So you went through this process what as a as a 16 year old going for this again what did it teach you and what did you have to learn about yourself along that journey um i think more so that i am not everybody's taste mm. number 1 number 2 i'm not the only singer in the world yeah everybody is deserving you know of of what of what they are wanting to do if they put the effort into it. Um, another thing is there is talent shows and there are TV shows. Come on. That was a TV show, you know, and at least I'm, um, you know, fortunate enough on my season because one of the, I guess, auditions before we even get to the main celebrity, what everybody else sees is yeah. the producer of the show. And they were up front. They're like, you got to give us TV. You got to be able to hold a note because it's a singing, com you know, it's a singing show. Yes. You have to be, but you we're not looking for the best singer, you know? You have and to have a story. You have to have a story and you have to be relatable, which also applies to, to um, I guess, just to your own, if you want to go down this journey as a solo artist, you still need that. You need a sense yeah. of, of tangibility, of relatability for people. It's not just how great you sing, you know? And especially with shows like that, People mistake volume for talent. Yes. 
You know what I mean? Because there's so many different types of singers. But for a broad audience, if somebody is, you know, screaming a Whitney song that may not necessarily be in key the whole time, <laughs> non-musicians are going to be like, oh, that person sings. Mm. Versus someone that knows how to sit in their tone and choice and restrain and, you know, it's so I realized that, okay, there, there's a place for everything. Yeah. And that may this may, this may not be my lane per mm -hmm. se. Right. But somebody loves me. And right. if that one person loves me, that means there's hundreds or thousands of other one peoples around. I'm going to go to them. Mm -hmm. so trying to fit into this bubble. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's, yeah. A, that's a great model to kind of go by, right? Like there's a crowd, there's a lane. For me yes. to exist in in thousands of other people who are trying to get to the same place that i'm trying to get to you know Absolutely. what i mean so let's talk about the evolution right we noticed you changed your name over to dre scott from yeah. deandre why did you make the change so not to give you too much of a backstory <laughs> a little long-winded so please be like all right <laughs> shut up we love um, you, so no worries. <laughs> um, I put out an album independently myself called Black Denim, um, which did so well as far as in, if, in in my eyes, you know, folks could be like, "Eh, I didn't what I even heard it." For me, as a as a in the, you know, twenty one year old, twenty two year old, um, put out a, a full project that I produced and and wrote, and you know, a full project because folks don't do albums no more. Right. I was very proud of it. And, you know, it, it got a lot of love. Um, but with that being said, I had no team. When people like nowadays, they say like, oh, I'm an independent artist. They got it. They're independent artists, but they got their own folks that are just not a major label. Right. That's, right. that's considered independent artists. I was an independent artist. I, mm. <laughs> you know, I was, everything was under my name. I pay, I had three jobs. I was living out of my car. Mm. I, did it all me i paid for everything i did it all that was mine i didn't have a team to like let me know like hey before you put a thing out let's check how many other folks are named deandre mm -hmm. <laughs> as right. the artist and it turns out there's about five of them so i get lost in context you know even like things on on uh spotify or whatever right look because it's pinging it's pinging those other people exactly so, whole, so now it's just like well now there's no specific lane yeah since like now it's just you know and now i get lost it's either you like this one song and then somebody else's song that's named deandre plays and you're like ah i don't like this artist anymore right. so i don't get mixed up in, in conversation um so i, I needed a new name and yeah. i love my name i think my parents named me properly right. um so and scott is my middle name with one t because my father's name um so that i was like so hey scott yeah thank you that is so sierra cool. wanted sierra wanted dre which mm -hmm. I love because everyone calls me Dre. No one really calls me DeAndre unless like my mom's kind of like trying to get my attention. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know me. um, so or I'm somebody's like, mad and exactly. now they want to call you DeAndre. DeAndre, exactly, exactly. So I just, I wanted to keep it. And then also there's already a, a very well-known Dre out there. So I was like, mm -hmm. I don't think Dre is going to be good because we yeah. already we already have a, uh, a uh, affiliation with the word Dre. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get stuck with that. I need something else to tag, tag it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I love I love that. That's it is creative. It's really creative. Even for me, I was like, Scott, where, where's the other T at? I didn't even know that it was your father's name. That is so creative. You mentioned just a minute ago that Sierra wanted you to be Dre. How did yes. that connection happen to Beauty Mark Entertainment? How did you meet her and how did you become part of the label? Um Russell, and if y'all don't know, Russell is Sierra's husband, Russell Wilson. Um, DM me. I was on tour for my album with Black Denim. Yeah, uh, you know, and I, I know a couple people will drag me for for the word tour, but I was on tour. You know, in in my sense, as an independent they artist, still exists, y'all. They yes, don't. yes. You know, whether it's a whether it's you know we're doing theaters or whatever, we're doing clubs, and that's how mm -hmm. I, old school we I do clubs. Right. So. I was on tour for that. And then I got a DM talking about, hey, do you have management? Or how can we get a reach from you? So in my mind, because I was broke, mm -hmm. I'm like, cool, y'all had some kids. You want me to sing at a first birthday or whatever? <laughs> and, uh, you know, a good paying gig. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Here's this. Um, here's, here's, you know, here's the number, here's the whatever. 
and they called me in two minutes. Wow. FaceTime in two minutes. They're like, hey, we just want to make sure and let you know that we're real. This is not a hack. Um, we've been praying on it. We've been trying to start a label and we've been stuck on your videos lately. And like, it just felt right. So we want to look into signing you. Mm -hmm. And that was super cool because I, I was a vision. I'm, I'm a vision board person. So that was my biggest thing at the start of that year. I was like, I need it. I need a team because yeah. I, was, I was running myself down doing this by myself. All the paperwork, writing all the contracts, trying to finance everybody. Like I lived mm -hmm. in Hawaii at the time. So flying five people from Hawaii to London yeah. to work to I, that I is had, training. It's training. Yeah. I wouldn't change it for the world. It was the best experience, most happiest time of my life. Um, but I just I needed a team. Yeah. So it, I think it was just, you know, God's plan in that Come sense. On. You know, and so I was like, you know what? It took me about seven months for me to to sign, though. Mm -hmm. I've been signed twice. So I had to, like, let it go. I'm 20 years old, so I grew up on Sierra. Right. So I had to that, like, ah! You know what I mean? <laughs> like, calm down for a second. Um, and get to the business. Yeah. And, yeah, and look at this contract over, sent it to a lawyer, you know, and it, they were super lenient, super cool. Anything I wanted, they let me have. Yeah. Um. And then more than anything, uh, I got to meet them. And they are just the most um, authentic, genuine people. And I, I just, I think more than anything, because again, I've been signed before. Yeah. Um, I was just, it just left a bad taste in my mouth twice. It's a mm -hmm. major label, through Interscope right, and, right, right. and, you know, and an uh, independent branch through Universal. Um, so I was like, let me just, the, meeting them, after meeting them, it, it really just like, okay, these, these people in my eyes have the best interests for me yeah um so yeah so i ended up signing with them well, that's how it happened you mentioned like you know just kind of your vision board and the things that you have set for your life and i yes. think a lot of that is manifestation right the things Absolutely. that you start speaking and you start saying and you you start working towards every single day and it's the evolution of who you become right yes. so for you let's talk about your musical style now i've been following you for a while and your falsetto is insane like in same. There were some notes I would try to hit. In the shower, they sound like DeAndre. They sound like Drake <laughs> Scott. But, <when laughs> but when I put it to a recording, it just it's like sheep trying to just make it happen out of the barn. So the talk, about, talk about the evolution of your musical style and where you feel like it came from. Um, I always to me, I, I'm to me, I'm 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 a man in my 60s. Mm. I am a 67 year old man and I feel like I've been there for the past 20 years yeah I always loved older music you know I'm I'm, I'm young still I'm getting older but I'm young still um so even like in in elementary you know, like grade school I was bumping stylistics I was bumping, you know my first concert was Earth Wind and Fire yeah. so like that's just what I listened to that's what I knew I I grew up listening to falsetto singers the Bard, yeah. Philip Bailey you know, and Hoffman Jr., the, those are like uh, that era um, I always loved because it fit my voice. And then on another side note, um, I sang Hawaiian music growing up a lot. Mm. Um, and dance hula, and they have a thing called leo ki'e ki'e. So it's like, it's, it means, basically it means, translates to skip, skipping voice, skipping yeah. voice. It's like a, like a yodel. So it's that, and I love Patti LaBelle. So it's that break into the, um, into your falsetto. Mm -hmm. so, um, that harsh break, which I love. Um, so I just, that's what I, I guess, um, exercised all the time as, as a kid. Um, and I, as, as people, as, as humans, you know, we all, we mimic what we like sonically. Mm -hmm. That's how we learn how to talk. Right. So that's just something that I loved. Um, so, <laughs> um, that's why, uh, I sit with my falsetto. It's people like that. Um, but yeah, I, now I feel like I am going off subject. What was no, the question? Actually <laughs> not. Not at all. I'm taking, you don't see me? I'm taking the end of my face and going closer to the screen. It worked. <laughs> I am, I'm eating this up. I was just about to ask you to sing the alphabet because I'm like, how could you do this alphabet in Dre Scott style? I would love to hear it. <clears throat> A, B, C, D, 
E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Oh, yes. Yes. So now walk us through the process of your newest single, Feelings. Oh. Because that's that's one. I Yeah. I, I'm already here. So talk to us about the inspiration behind that and the co-writing and the whole entire producing experience. Yeah, so that was my first experience of co-writing and mm. and uh, I guess creating with others. That was a very hard experience. I can't take too, too, too much credit for that song. Yeah. I did just, you know, little inflictions and little, you know, words and whatever. It it was me, um, this dude named Marcus, who's amazing, who who wrote, uh, who worked with a lot of Snow Allegra um, and a whole bunch of folks. Yeah. Uh, and Sierra actually helped mm -hmm. write that, John. That whole post hook. Yes. That, you gotta say it. That's all C. C wrote that. Um, and then we worked with an amazing uh, producer. Actually, my whole new project is under uh, this guy, Ness. Okay. Uh, who did like a lot of, who did literally that I Want You Around track, did mm -hmm. all of Snow Legra stuff um, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, but if you know me, that's probably more of your lane. Yeah. Um, it was it was different. Like again, my first album, which I love, please check it out. It's called Black Denim under DeAndre. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that was on me. That was my experiences. That was my melodies. That was my feelings. That was all just that. So to go in and try to, I guess, share my vulnerability was mm -hmm. very uh, foreign and a little uncomfortable yeah. because I'm so used to being Doing able your own. Doing it on my own and, and to be messy in front of myself. Yeah. You know, which I don't mind. I don't mind messing up. I don't mind, but something like even vocal, I feel like I'm a I'm a great vocalist. I may not be the best, but I'm I'm a great vocalist. Mm -hmm. Because I don't mind messing up. Yeah. I'll go on stage, mess up, call myself, I'll be like, mm, that's a, a wrong run. Stop the band, get the run till I get it right. And we go uh -huh. back and go. Right. I don't mind that. You know what I mean? We got you can't but to have to do that in front of other people with writing because now it's very personal. Yeah. It's no longer just a sonic form of, you know what I mean? This is mm -hmm. now me, you're, you're judging in per se. Yeah. What I'm feeling. Um, so it was different. It took me a second. That first session, I can oh I was just kind of like. Yeah, that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Because I don't, I'm one of them ones, if I don't like something and I don't have, if there's a problem that I don't like and there's I don't have a solution, I'm going to shut my mouth. Right, right. I, wanna, I don't like that. I'm going to have to give you something better. Right. Because why don't you like it? Exactly. Exactly. Because now, now I'm not contributing. And I could say why I don't, but my thing is I need, I need to give you an alternative or a mm -hmm. solution to the problem. Yeah. And not just the problem. And not just the problem, because now I just feel like I'm being a burden, mm -hmm. um, which I had to get over too. Because at the end of the day, this is my song, and I don't want to yeah. be wasting time yeah. write a whole song that I don't believe in, which mm -hmm. I've had to do for years. Because I we signed, I, oh, I signed about four years ago, and we finally just, even this song we wrote that song four years ago. Wow, I didn't know that. It's super old, um, at least for me, it's super old. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Anyway, again, I'm getting off topic. It was, it was a new experience that I've grown to learn how to do. I still yeah. prefer writing by myself, but I do like, I'm more open to it and I'm not afraid to mess up in front of folks because I, I get to learn different styles and, you know, yeah. get a better audience in what, what, what we're doing. So do you look at yourself now as a mentor to other young people who are your age looking to do what you're doing now? I wouldn't say I'm a mentor. I would just say I've, I'm experienced. And if anybody ever wants to know my journey, I am all more than open to share it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that's really it. I feel like I couldn't really give myself the title of a mentor, but I feel like everybody is a mentor in some shape or form if we're if we're following our purpose. The older I got, the less I I, I held on to dreams and started mm-hmm. honing into what my purpose was. And I yeah. really thought, you know, I think, you know, God gave me a gift and my purpose is to sing. Mm. So so I'm going to I'm going to change my world through to voice. To what the purpose is. Exactly. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make a difference in the world through my purpose. Yeah. You know, that, that doesn't mean I'm going to be, you know, curing cancer, mm-hmm. but simply simple things of just, I'm going to write this song for me. And then if maybe somebody in my world, in my circle is changed, I'm doing what my, what I'm called to do in, in the physical realm. Right. Right. You, you know, mentioned something earlier and I wanted to go back to it. You said, I didn't even want to go audition. My mom made me do it. So mm-hmm. what was the original dream? And what does the conversation with young DeAndre, Dre Scott, even look like now? There, honestly, there was no dream. There was no dream. Wow. As, bad, as bad as that sounds. And, it, you know, you're a kid. You, when you're a kid, it, it jumps around. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was a kid, I thought I wanted to be a comedian. I ain't funny. <laughs> I'm not funny. Um wanted you know wanted to be a basketball player because my dad played basketball i no hate basketball i don't Mm -hmm. like it you know things change and then high school again i never i i always sang this is something i did since i was a kid i always sang yeah um it just i never had a community i never had an example of what this looks like of what it looked like um, granted, I did want to, I danced, I danced hula for years as mm-hmm. a kid. Um, I wanted to be a hula teacher for a second, but then I was just kind of like, ah, eh, I don't want that. And that I could get, that's a whole nother conversation we got to get yeah. to. But yeah, in high school, I was, I was ready to go to the military. Wow. I just, I kind of was looking for some type of, I guess. Of belonging. Yeah. And some, you know, sense of path. Cause I just didn't know. I was really just like, cool. I was going to, I want to join ROKC. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to start my journey for military. Yeah. I was, I didn't have a, a reason for mm. saying. You know something, it is so, you're the first person, I think I've interviewed so many people, and you're the first person to ever say that, and that is so honest, right? That things change. What we first <laughs> aspire to be or want to do, that's by the wayside. Like you mentioned, I, I wanted to do A, B, and C. I know, like, I wanted to be a fireman. I hate fire. What are you talking about? I'm not Thank dumb you. Kid. I'm not saying no cats. Are you crazy? Like, <laughs> no, no. But that is so honest. I, I, I hear a lot of these stories. People go, yeah, you know, I wanted to sing my entire life. And it's like, no, baby. You No. You can barely walk. What are you talking about? Thank you. What do you, you. What Thank do you, you mean? I mean, I love singing. It was something no. I did just kind of naturally. But to, it, to me, it just wasn't, it wasn't realistic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. that wasn't something I it wasn't tangible for me. It wasn't yeah. like it, nor did nor did I see myself in that light. Right. Um, you know, and the older I get, the I think that's the one thing I can like mentor the kids is that not everybody is destined to be Beyonce. Mm. You know what I mean? And granted, reach for that, but also, yes. but also like congratulate yourselves in the little win. Yes. You have a gig, you have a steady gig, and you're making money. My thing is you're doing you're doing backing vocals. You got like a thing with Sony and you're doing backing vocals for it. whoever artist, even if it's just studio work, you're it's making a win. Money. it's a win. We're creatives and we're getting compensated for it and we're going, you know what I mean? And we're comfortable. Yes. yes. Nobody told me that. It's only you gotta be this or you're yeah. you're nothing. And you know, and I'm space- finally financially good. Yes. Yeah. And I and I think this is this is the conversations that I think need to be had now, right? Where we're yeah. at, where we have all, I mean, as as much as this generation now are full of creatives, I feel like everybody's chasing for that, right? Yes. Where all these little spaces right here are okay to be in. It is Absolutely. okay. You are still a winner there. No one yes. told you, there's no way, there's no rule book for what no. success looks like. You know what yes. I mean? You create it. So I, I really like that. I really, really do. Because I feel like no one is saying that. Everybody's like, chase for this. And it's like, no, that's not realistic. Only yes. a few people can do that. And it's not that they're better than you. They just had an opportunity to get there. And you right now are right here where you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? what it is. And it's okay for that. And my yeah. thing is, 
strive for that, but also sit in that now and sit in that that accomplishment of yo, somebody Money. yeah, can my thing is I am I'm in my eyes, I am successful, but you'll get people and I'll tell them I'm a musician full time. They'll be like, oh, so how do you pay your bills? I said absolutely fine <laughs> and on time for the past how many years? Right. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. for a lot of people, they don't see that they're you know if, if i'm not on the radio if i'm not on the tvs if i don't got all the numbers and that's one thing too it's another thing don't be looking for the daggone blue checks and all the followers and stuff right you like i remember when i first got my little blue check they're like oh you're so excited i said i can't cash that blue check <laughs> I, I don't care about that daggone check i'm still poor right i'm, I'm still, still struggling. struggling to eat yeah that check ain't helping it ain't it ain't doing nothing so i'm like just th stop stop chasing the surface things and yes. look at what 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 will make you a better what's fulfilling your purpose mm. and you know and um giving you that nutrients for your soul and for your heart my thing is i'm singing mm. i may be doing gigs that i don't love because i still do them gigs i don't yeah. care how big i am Right, you know, and a lot I do I do great gigs and then I do them little filler ones. Right. I take I take a gig because I've been I've had it where I, I didn't have it all the time. Mm -hmm. Especially for our field of of uh, uh our career. It's yeah. never it's never consistent. Right. Right. So my thing is today I'm gonna do that little that little rich person's wedding. I'm yeah, you know, I'm in a wedding band. Mm. I'm gonna do the daggone wedding. Right. right. You know, and handle my handle my home and my family. With the money I'm making. And enjoy the moment, no matter and where it's at. Moment. And also, I'm going to do this big old show over here, too, and yes. get paid. Back. But also, on a random Thursday, I'm going to go to the bar and sing this for a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep working. Right. And I'm right. glad to that's what I'm doing. Yes, I love that message. Yeah. I, am, I am excited. You, you don't understand. You have been the friend in my head for a long time. And I said this to you even before we started the show, that I, we were trying to make this happen before yeah. COVID. So yeah. I'm so excited that we were able to sit down and have this conversation now. And I really hope to meet you in person. We can chat it up, lunch on me, um, because I just want to continue giving you your flowers. You are such an amazing individual. And I want you guys to follow Dre Scott just because I said so. That's it. That's it's <laughs> it. Period. Period. <laughs> and make sure that you are tapping into all of his amazing projects, keeping them lifted up in prayer, and just being a part of the community. Dre Scott, we thank you for being here. I love you, brother, and I love all of you for watching. I'll see you on another episode of One on One Recording Starts. Have a there good you one. go.